Okay, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking a look at the rest of what Aaron sent me. In the previous episode, I looked at his N64 and an N64 game. In this episode, I'm going to be taking a look at three Super Nintendos, and I'm also going to be retro writing one of them in the end. So stay tuned for the end to see that. So the first things first, uh, he sent over just a Super Nintendo board. He claimed he tried to desolder the card connector for whatever reason, and he just couldn't. His thumb got tired. He has a, I, I think he has a desoldering pump, and yeah, that does wear wear out your thumb if you're trying to take off a connector like this. And he got about halfway, or he got, he made some progress, but then gave up. So what I'm gonna do is before I could even test the console to see if it works, I have to resolder the cartridge connector so I can figure out what he was trying to do. Now keep in mind this was a late night session so it's kind of dark in the beginning. On the first board I did here it is a little bit darker than usual. So I'm still trying to figure out the lighting. I don't know what I'm going to do yet because I don't, I don't like the way this lighting is. So this won't be for long. So when I'm done drag soldering, I always double check for bridges. A bridge can actually ruin your day if if you don't if you don't see it, you overlook it, and you're just you don't you can't figure out what's going on just due to a simple bridge. In this case, I had two of them. So right now I'm going to clean the cartridge connector really well and see what I get, see if it fires up, see if I get an image. So as you can see it does fire up the test cart but that doesn't mean that it's fully working. Let me f do the burn in test and let me see if we get sound, if the picture. So right now it froze at the burning test so that's not good. So that could mean that the cartridge connector is still a little flimsy. It might need to be cleaned a little further. But eventually after a few tries wiggling with the cartridge, it does actually get through the burn and test. So none of these chips are hot. I think that the cartridge connector is still dirty. As you can see, I'm getting all these funky screens. But like I said, I do play with the cartridge and I get it to a position where I do it does actually get through the burn and test. So that wasn't even a jump cut, it actually just skipped the hardware testing and went right to the slideshow. And it started from the middle of the slideshow, so I've never seen that before. But once again, I do think, because the, the problem isn't recurring, it's just random problems over and over. So I, I do think that the cartridge connector is dirty, and I'm going to keep cleaning it. Like I said, none of these chips are hot, I don't suspect any bad chips. I'm going to clean the cartridge connector a little bit better and see if I can actually get this to uh, test properly. So I have this cartridge that's for cleaning the cartridge connector. So you put a little alcohol in the pad and a little alcohol into the cartridge connector and you just insert it a few times and it should clean it up. So this time I do wiggle the cartridge and it doesn't freeze up, it doesn't lock up, it still plays. So I think that the cartridge connector was really dirty in this case and I think this board is actually working just fine.
So it seems to be firing up cartridges on the first try every time. So on to the next Super Nintendo. So here is the Super Famicom. It's actually, from what I understand, Aaron told me that it was a Super Nintendo board inside a Super Famicom. I think he did a board swap or something along those lines. So here I'm testing to see if I get power. And I'm not getting any power. So let me take this apart to see what I'm working with. So with the board removed, I want to look at the section that would pertain to no power. And it's usually the fuse, but in this case, uh, upon closer inspection, it looks like somebody clipped the voltage regulator at the leads. And I don't know why they would do that, but now that just made uh, this job a little bit harder. But not too hard. It's not difficult. I have plenty of regulators from other boards. So that's just one more step. So I'm going to flip this board over because if this was a Super Nintendo board, I'm curious why there was a Super Famicom jack. Now, if he swapped the power port, that would make sense. And it hasn't been soldered into place. So yeah, that makes sense. I got to solder that into place. I also noticed that his iron or somebody burned this corner. So they, uh, they got their iron a little close to that plastic there. Also, under this heat sink, I noticed that there's caps missing. So yeah, this is one big puzzle. I got to figure this out. So to replace the voltage regulator and add those caps into circuit, I have to remove the heat sink. So when I remove the heat sink, the problems just keep compounding. I notice there's missing pads, excessive solder blobs, a bodge wire, and even a singed mark on the SHVC sound module port. So yeah, it's getting worse and worse. Okay, so I'm just going to do what I can and just try to get it functioning, Get see if I can get power out of it. That's the first step sign to getting this thing to work is see if I can get a red light. So first things first, I'm going to solder the power port into circuit. Um, easy enough, it's not hard. And next I'm going to remove the old vo voltage regulator and add a new one. Now this is the one that confused me the most. It would make no sense to clip the voltage regulator at the joint like that, at the, at the le leads like that. I've never seen anybody do that before. But there's a first time for everything. So here, I could have broke out the desoldering gun, but I didn't want to wait for it to heat up. So I just got it. I just got a desoldering pump, the, the hand pump, and cleared those, those through holes. So here's a voltage regulator from the parts board you just saw. And it saved a couple of Super Nintendos. So now I'm good. It was usually these 7805s never go bad. And on a parts board like this, or this just a board that I don't know if it's going to work or not, I'm going to throw in an old voltage regulator just to see what I can get out of it. So what I do first is I screw the voltage regulator to the heat sink just so I can have the, the, the perfect distance so this thing can sit as flush as possible. Um, now I'm going to actually screw the heat sink with one screw to the board and then I can just solder the three legs. So these legs are a little long always, they always just a little bit long. So let me clip them, just since they were bent a bit, I don't want them shorting or touching against each other. 
and now I can actually remove the heat sink again and not worry about removing the voltage regulator the voltage regulator will always stay on the board so yeah now that that's done I'm gonna figure out what I'm gonna do with these caps now I'm gonna try to clear up these pads with a little desoldering braid now I don't know what uh, kind of solder he was using I think this is lead free because uh, I have my solder my um, iron set to 300 Celsius and it's not melting this solder so yeah, I don't know if he was using lead free or what kind of solder he was using, but it's much different than what I'm using. The solder is not actually melting, it's breaking off. It's like heating just enough to break off, and it's breaking off in, in balls. So I don't know. Yeah, I think it's lead free. Also, there's two bodge wires here. I don't know what he was trying to do, but to add these caps into circuit, I don't think I need these bodge wires and when I'm trying to clear as I was trying to clear up this pad it broke off too so now that's another pad I'm missing so now I'm actually burning the board with my iron I set my iron a bit high just to get these this solder to melt and now I'm accidentally burning the board and I actually think that I removed the pad just because my iron was set a little bit too high so I'm not gonna blame that on him so this bridge wire actually loops around from these two points and I don't think those two points are correct. I could be wrong and uh, as I'm editing this video I don't remember if they were correct or not. So, but I do remove the wire altogether and I add these caps into circuit a different way. So now after I tin all the pads, I decide to clean. So yeah, I should have actually cleaned the area before I tin the pads. But I guess it's better late than never. So I'm trying not to use the greatest caps on this board. Because I don't actually know if this is going to work or not. So I got these Chinese kit full of generic caps. And they're not the greatest caps, but for this job it'll get the they'll get the job done So for the capacitor with the broken pads, it actually shares the same pads, the same continuity with C60, the one I just laid, the previous cap that I laid down. So I'm just going to use that same pad, those same pads for both caps. Obviously, this isn't my best work, but it should get the job done. Here's another thing I overlooked. I just noticed it. Someone tried to pull the reset switch out or desolder it from the board and didn't get all the way through. So I'm just going to resolder that right now. And one more thing, the cartridge connector. It seems like some of the pins were cleared off as if someone tried to remove the pin connector as well. So I'm going to solder that back.
So now for the final test. Let's see if we get anything. Yeah, after all that, I got a black screen. But it is getting power, so I did restore power to the unit. Now on the cartridge pins, I noticed that some of these um, pins are corroded really bad. So since this is going to be garbage or at least a parts bin or a donor or whatever, I don't mind smearing Brasso on this pin connector. I could always just replace it if it doesn't work. And this is like the last ditch effort anyway. So I'm going to just try anything and hopefully I can get something out of it. So the Brasso, I couldn't really get good leverage on it. I couldn't get um, a good scrub on the pin that I wanted to clean. But I did clean up a bit of it. And so I'm going to, before I do anything, I'm going to take some alcohol and clean up the Brasso residue. And as you can see, this was the pin I was trying to scrub up. It is green, corroded. This could be the causing the issue single-handedly. There's a couple of others, but there's one that's really bad. And on the inside here, it's probably just the same, dirty. So I'm also going to clean this with Brasso. So to clean this is a bit easier. I can just wedge uh, a Q-tip in here with some Brasso and just scrub really, really hard back and forth. And it should really polish these pins really nice. And if this doesn't solve it, then yeah, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to do. So after all that, I do get the cartridge to post, but it's frozen. And there's a glitch on the time screen there and it's not scrolling and these numbers they're actually a little bit brighter than they should be so yeah I did get something out of it just not the right thing it's still not working now this game actually just freezes at the monopoly screen before there's a, any sound or anything I do get just that so the console has something there it's just it's not it's not working it's not fully working so yeah now as you can see it's the morning time and I've been working all night on this board. I know it's, this This is why some sometimes people say to me, what's the point? Why, why don't you just throw this in the parts bin and be done with it? And I do do that sometimes when a console is really rusty or there's nothing to do on the board. Or there's if a console is too far gone, I don't mess with it too much. But as a courtesy to Aaron, he, he took the time to send me this stuff and I did want to look at it. And it looked like everything was fine. It, everything was reversible and simple upon first inspection. But after that, now it's like I'm really drawing at straws here trying to figure out what's going on. So I'm going to desolder. Well, I've already desoldered the cartridge connector, even just the, the full cartridge connector. And since he sent me this third party, this really cheap third party connector, I'm going to solder this into place and see if, I, if it works with this. If not, then yeah, this is a parts bin, a parts board rather. So as you can see under, I've scratched up the solder mask just to see if there were any broken traces. Now in the past, I did get a Super Famicom with a couple of broken traces under the cartridge connector. So I was actually hopeful that if I took off the cartridge connector and probed around, I would be able to find anything. And I didn't find anything, so this is really the last thing I'm going to try is just putting this cartridge connector into circuit and see if I get anything different if not then into the parts bin
So now for the moment of truth, I did swap the cartridge connector and I got no change. It's exactly how it was before I swapped the cartridge connector. So I think that this is a bad CPU. So I'm just going to label it and throw it into the parts bin. I've done all I can with it. So here's the last console. It's been very yellowed. And he says that it's it works intermittently. And I find that it, it works just fine. I, I clean my games. My games are in nice order, nice shape. And they fire up all the time. And there's sound. Everything is okay. So the only problem I can see on this console is the reset button isn't working. In fact, it feels really loose. There, are, There's no resistance. So let me just replace the reset switch on this and retro bright it. And this should be good as new. Now I noticed there's a mark on the controller port here. So I guess he had his iron a little bit too close to the plastic shell. And they burned that or somebody burned it. No big deal. So as I took off the lid, I noticed that the reset switch is actually missing. So I got to find the reset switch from another console and put it in here. So now here's another first. This heatsink here has been grinded. I don't know why or how that happened. This is just bizarre to me. So this console doesn't need too much work, obviously it does work, it just needs the reset switch replaced. But there is some rust stains here, rust spots around the screw holes. So I'm going to try to 99% um, alcohol just to see if I can break up some of this rust. It doesn't really, it isn't really that effective. So I'll just take a fiberglass brush, fiberglass pen and scratch up the, or just polish up the, the metal here on the edge. And I'm going to do this all around the board. So I am going to clear up the rest of the edges of the 
the board the rust spots around the board off camera I'm gonna focus mostly on recording or getting footage of me replacing the switch so to clear these through holes I'm actually gonna add some solder just to get a good suction when I come in with my pump and I should be able to clear these in one shot So yeah, here's something you guys may not know. It's not the uh, widely kept secret or anything, but you can actually replace uh, the Super Nintendo switches with an N64. It's the same switch. It might be a different color, but it does work. So I'm going to pull this N64 board out of the parts bin. I had this just because I had it on hand and I can just take the switch from this board right away. So skipping forward a bit and not getting the camera to steady up, I did pull the reset switch out of circuit and now I'm just going to add it right to the Super Nintendo board. So now let's see if it works. I always test the reset switch. Never trust that it works. Sometimes it, it, you'll have a faulty switch. A lot of times these switches go bad. In this case it is working. So now let me f take care of the rest of the rust on the edges of this board and on the underside of this board and get to retro brighting. So I did most of the scrubbing off camera. As you can see, I got about 90% off, so that's an improvement. I'll take it. So here's the top shell. Now in this case, it yellowed all the way through the other side. So sometimes when you get these yellowed shells, they don't always make it. The yellowing doesn't always make it to the bottom half or the, the interior of the plastic. And I'll show you that in a, in a second. I have an example with another top shell that I'm going to be retro brighting as well. And in this case, one that, see now here in this shot, the shell I have right on the left side is the one from Aaron's console. And the one on the right is one I have to be retro brighted. And it hasn't yellowed all the way through. So I suspect that the one on the left isn't going to come out as great as the one on the right. In fact, I don't even think I'm going to be able to retro bright it to the original Super Nintendo color. But the one on the right, the one my the the one the extra shell that I have, that one might be salvageable. So, here I use a container wrapped in UV lights and I'll also be putting another 60 watt UV light on top. And what I'm going to do is here I use liquid um, hydrogen peroxide uh, 40 volume or 12 percent solution and I do one part peroxide and two part water so it's one gallon of hydrogen peroxide and two gallons of water so I'm gonna leave this for as long as I need in this video I left it for 48 hours and you'll see the result when I get back 
The two bottles of water is just to weigh down the shells so they don't float to the top. You don't want that because then you'll get lines or you'll get discolorations or, or just little spots on the board. And it also actually raises the water level a bit so it just occupies space. So like I said earlier, it's been about 48 hours and every 8 hours or so I did come and double check to make sure everything was okay. And it wasn't ready until the 48 hour mark and I'm really surprised with these results. Now I'm going to shut everything off and here it is. The, I haven't dried off the, the shells yet but the one on the left came out really nice. Not as good as the one on the right but really surprising. Now it's more yellowed on the bottom because it, it wasn't exposed to the top down light. But the interior isn't what I'm looking for as long as the outside looks as good as factory which here it is under better lighting and you can barely tell the difference. Now the one on the left in this situation was the my shell. The one on the right is the one that was yellowed throughout. And yeah, there is a little discoloration, but like I said, the bottom, the interior portion that isn't seen, I'm not too worried about. Now here's the bottom half of Aaron's console. Now when this came in, the bottom half was whiter than the top half and now the rolls are reversed. The top is almost the same color as factory now here's a piece I didn't retro bright because I didn't need to and right here in this video you can see that it's almost the same color It's very subtle difference so I'm gonna be retro brighting the bottom half so skipping forward a bit here it is this is the end result I only left it in for 24 hours it wasn't as yellow as the other uh, top shells that I had and now the bottom half is actually 100% the same color as the original Super Nintendo would be from factory and there's a subtle difference from the top and the bottom the top is still just a tinge yellower than the bottom but that's more than I expected for the top shell to get to now here's the rusty RF shields now these aren't important you could just toss these these are just to reduce interference when you're using the RF port nobody uses the RF port anymore but for consistency sake I do have some nice our, uh, RF shields that I'll just be adding just because I have these on hand I may as well use them I'm really happy how this video turned out there was three I got to showcase three consoles being repaired um, obviously they were involved in their own way first console obviously was just a loose board and didn't need much the second was more involved and I ultimately couldn't get that one to run now I never claimed to be a professional I never claimed to get everything to work so keep in mind that I do, just like anyone else, I'm not the best repair person. I, I, I can't figure out everything. I wish I could. And the third console, I actually wasn't, the, the repair wasn't that involved. It, it just needed a reset switch and had a bit of corrosion. But that was easy. And then I got, but I also did get to showcase the my RetroBrite setup and how I get these consoles back to restoring their natural color. So yeah, this video I actually did enjoy making. So the one thing I am disappointed at, I forgot to add this plastic piece to the RetroBrite. I, I knew I forgot one thing and usually when you RetroBrite consoles, it's one top shell, one bottom shell, and one controller port, usually. And um, I just overlooked it. I was going to replace it and because it has a burn mark on it and I never actually replaced it. And I do have plenty of those controller ports, and but they're all yellow for some reason. Those those front plastic controller ports they get yellow quite often. Sometimes they're the only things that get yellowed. And I was gonna retro bright one and replace the old one that was burned, and I just forgot to do that. So I'm just gonna add the one that came with this console just back, so you can see that it's still there. But I really like how this console turned out nonetheless.
So here's the finished product. I'm really impressed how close it came to the original color of the Super Nintendo, especially knowing how yellow it once was. And in a little bit, I'm going to give you a couple before and after shots to close out this video. So yeah, the, as you can see, the burn mark is still there, but the case is in much better condition. So if you made it this far into this video, please consider giving me a thumbs up, subscribing if you haven't already, share this with a friend. Um, I'm trying to grow this channel and the more subscribers I get, the more questions I get, the more likes I get on my videos, it motivates me to create more and more content. So with all of that said, I really appreciate everybody for watching.